we are going through exercise 13e, this is question 2, which says, use the stated rule for each of the following to give an equivalent expression in simplest form. So for a and b, we need to use law 1, the logarithm of a product. The logarithm of a product is the sum of their logarithms, and here's an example of what we're going to be doing. So let's now see it in action. So the fact that we have the same base, we have 2 here and we have 2 here, that means we can multiply 10 and a together. So we're going to get log of 2 and then 10a. So they're multiplying together. Let's now move on to the next one. So again, we have the same base. We have 10, we have 10. So that means we can have the log of 10 and then 5 times 2 is 10. Now there's actually one more step we can do here. We can actually use our law 5. Now the law 5 tells us that the log with the base a and then a is its argument is going to be equal to 1. And if we think about it for a second, that makes perfect sense. If we were to look here, 10 is my base. 10 is my answer, so this one's my answer. Obviously, my exponent here is going to be 1. And whenever this is the case, whenever we have the same number as the base and the argument, that means a is my base, a is my answer. This has to be 1 in order for it to be that. So that means right here, this is equal to 1. And this is kind of just showing you why that's true. Okay, let's keep on keeping on. So next we need to use, let me just come here. Next we need to use log law 2 to answer C and D. So this is the logarithm of a quotient. So the logarithm of a quotient is a difference in their logarithms. So right here, again, we have the same bases. So that means we can divide 9 and 4. So we're going to get log of 2, 9 over 4. And that's our answer to that one. Next, we're going to do the same thing. We have the same base again. So log of 2. And now we're going to have 10 over 5. Now, 10 over 5, that's the same thing as log of 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now, as you can see, we're in the same uh, situation as we were back here. Both my base and my argument are the same. And we know according to log law 5, that's going to mean that my answer is going to be 1. So for D, my answer is going to be 1. All right, let's keep on going and use our next log law now. So now we're going to talk about log law 3, the logarithm of a power. So as you can see, we can bring the power to the front of the logarithm. So right here, what we can do is we can say that this 3 will go to the front, and I'm going to have 3 log 2 a. And let's now come to this one. This one we're going to have in a, a particular answer to. So again, I'm going to take this 3 to the front. So I'm taking this 3 to the front, just as I took this 3 to the front. So I'm going to get 3 log 2, 8. Now, just by looking at this, hopefully you can see that my answer is going to be 9. The reason for that is because it's going to be 3 by... Now, this is my base. Actually, let me do this separately. Uh, let me just look here for a second. So just at this part right here, if we just put this over here, it's going to be 2 is my base, right? And then what's my exponent going to be if I'm going to get 8? It's obviously going to be x is equal to 3. So therefore, what I'm going to end up with is 3 by 3, which is going to be 9. But hopefully you can just look at that straight away and say, all right, I have a base of 2, my answer is 8, it's going to have an exponent of 3, 3 by 3 is going to be 9. So just like that, you get your answer. Let's now keep moving on and look at our next one. This is using log law 4. Now the log law 4 is very similar to log law 3. It's called the logarithm of... 1 over m. Again, you, do, you really don't need to memorize the, the order of the laws. You're, I don't think you're ever going to be in the position where we tell you what's log law for. You just need to know what they are and how to apply them. So the way that I memorize this one is simply knowing that another way to write this right here is this is 5, 6 minus 1. 
right? Because if I bring that up, my exponent is going to become negative. And now I just need to use log law three, in which I bring it to the front. And I'm going to get this as my answer, just like that. So as you can see, it's not as hard as it may look. Log law four is really just an extension of log law three. Let's keep on going and do our last one. So this is going to be log of, whoa, whoa, what happened there? Log of five of 25 minus one. I'm going to bring that minus to the front and I'm going to get the log of five. And this is going to be 25. Now five to 25, this is obviously going to be negative two because five raised to the two is going to be 25. So that means my answer is going to be negative two. So just like that, we've answered all our questions. I'm now going to go back and highlight them all. Highlight, highlight, this is nine. This is that one. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. We've gone through all the log laws and even talked about log law five. There's another component of log law five that we haven't spoken about yet. And that is when I'm going to have something that is equal to zero. So when it's equal to zero, that's going to tell me something about my argument, but we'll get more into that in another video. Hopefully this has been helpful to you.